about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. John 15 and verse 16. It says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. To ordain means to legitimize your operation. I have legitimized you to go and bear fruit. Galatians 1.24 And they glorified God in me. That men will look at your life and give glory to Jesus. You become an inspiration to people. I will always say it this way. You become a living epistle. That means if someone forgot his Bible at home, he doesn't get sad when he sees you because you are a continuation of his devotional. What he did not understand by reading the Bible, your life explains it. And someone is trying to understand favor and his loss as to how it works you become a personification of favor and God refers you he says you did not understand what I said but study the life of this person he said look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that bought you I call him alone and blessed him and increased him there are men that can personify dimensions in God your assignment is to be so illuminated by the light of God's word that you not only become a sign and a wonder, but that your life becomes an inspiration to nations. They can sit down and your life becomes a spiritual study project. That when the devil lies to anybody and says you cannot rise, you are the face that God will use to cancel that thought. He says, look at this man. I lifted him right from your place and you say Lord I now believe help my own belief how about the power of God there are many people who want to see the anointing of the Holy Spirit work in their lives they've done everything they know to do but they do not seem to have had a fair grasp on the operation of the anointing and many people continue to get frustrated and sometimes in anger, they just believe that everything that is a manifestation of the power of God must be demonic. Not so. Do not generalize frustration. You may be frustrated, but it does not mean there is no way out. Are we together? If I try to turn the key to a door, how many of you have had certain doors where it looks like you are the only one who knows what you do to that door to open? You lift it small before you turn it, then bring it down. Someone can come and suffer around that door and it will refuse to open. And you come with mastery, you already know what to do. So just because you are suffering in an area, don't generalize it. Go to them that sell and buy. There are always people that sell. To sell means the people who will give it to you at a cost. The cost is meekness. The cost is humility. Use humility to buy truth. Use meekness to buy truth. Use honor to buy truth. Buy the truth, he says, and sell it not. You don't buy it with naira and cobalt. Those are mundane things. You use honor to buy truth. You use hunger to buy truth. You use meekness to buy truth. Go to them that sell and buy. There are them that sell in Bauchi. There are them that sell dimensions you have not seen in your spiritual life. Humble yourself and buy. There are them that sell across this nation. 
There are people who have gained mastery over prosperity. There are people who have gained mastery over character. There are people who have gained mastery over influence. There are people who have gained mastery over their union with the Holy Spirit. Go to them that sell and buy. When you go to buy something in the market, there are times that you go to look for a spare part and people will tell you, oh, if it's for this car, there is only one man we know in this place. Is that true? That was the humility of Saul, the son of Kish and the servant. When the father's donkey got missing, after three days they were tired, they said, let's go back. And the servant said, no, there is a man. I know there is God, but there is still a man. Because God uses men. His system of advancing men is men. There is a man whose word does not fall to the ground. And as soon as Saul met with Samuel, even without talking to him about it, the donkey started going back home. Can I tell you, what looks like a mountain to you is only relative to the kind of grace you carry. There are graces when you encounter it to trivialize your mountain of 20 years and make it look like a mold hill. Challenges are not generic. They are only relative to the anointing confronting it. I can tell you this one by the Spirit. By the privilege of God's grace, I have met so many people in the body of Christ in this nation and across the globe. I am amazed at the kinds of anointings that people carry. Some of them, you don't know them. Some of them are old people. Some of them are not even, they are not even on TV. You don't know anything about them. Phenomenal anointings that they've carried based on light. Go to them that sell and buy. And every time you see them that sell, don't disrespect it. Find out how they got it and they got the authorization to be the distributors of it. A seller is a distributor. How did God trust them with that grace? I will tell you the reason why I'm many of us respectfully speaking especially around the north and the middle belt I did say this in Vouch yesterday the reason why there is a slow rate of growth I'm sorry to say it I am family relative to the region it is pride pride over nothing pride the Gankai, over nothing you see I've been to several regions in this nation and there are regions where even if it is a baby that has the solution they can kneel down with as touching what they are looking for but we pray that God will help us can I tell you don't be ashamed of what you don't know open up your heart and learn it you see if you take a candle if I give all these gentlemen candles and you are the first person to have it when you bring your candle and they light it we will not even know whose candle lit which ones are you seeing that now Receiving knowledge does not reduce you. It only increases you. I am passionate about learning and knowledge and I honor your fathers in PFN here for leaving their busy schedules to come. It's a lesson for us to learn. If the fathers in the land with what God has done and their many years of experience will come and sit down, it means there is something we need to learn. God is using their life and their humility to teach us something. Many of us, respectfully speaking, in their position will not do what they are doing. I know has been the plague of the African man. I know has been the unbecoming of we in these regions. Let the man who thinks he knows, know that he does not know as he ought to know. When I sit down before great people, I don't sit as Apostle Joshua Selman. I humble myself and I say, please, I don't know much about this area, that area. I humble myself like a sponge and I receive with humility. When I see people with proven track records and I know they love God sincerely, the Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. What you are looking for, somebody has it already, oh. What is a dream and an aspiration for you is someone's current realm of reality. I gave them a story in Gombe about the first crusade.
that we had. Very powerful crusade. Few people, but it was an honestly powerful crusade as far as signs and wonders is concerned. Because God had helped me in that area very early. I had gotten the keys. People were healed. People were blessed. But this issue of finances and this issue of influence. I believed I was a sincere man of God. And yet not more than 50 people came for the crusade. Publicity, we prayed, we fasted as if I would fall down. And yet with all of that thing, I was grateful of course, but I knew this was not the best. At the end of that crusade, we were owing 150,000. It may not be much now, but just rewind your mind to that time. 150,000 will be millions now. And the sound people were on the crusade ground while I was shouting all the names of Jesus. Healer, provider, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And the people I was owing, they were there just setting the sound waiting for me. I had pleaded with them to please, for God's sake, allow me to concentrate and finish this crusade. We celebrated miracles and mighty things. Just, I'm, I'm using this to tell you, you can be excellent in an area. But don't use the area of proficiency to mean every other area is good. Naaman was a captain in the Syrian army. A valiant man was he. But he was leprous. Don't use the area of success to excuse the area of darkness. It is your assignment to turn every area of darkness to become light. Are we together? We finished the crusade. I had not paid the small hotel where we stayed. I had not paid the sound. The transport that would take the people back to Zaria. The transport money was not there. I had to tell them to call the driver. I knew somebody in a Nigerian union of road transport worker. And I said they should call them. That by God's grace, before they get to Zaria, the gates there, their money will be waiting for them. So the drivers agreed. They went and left me. Hotel bills there. The sound people were saying they are not going anywhere. They came from Kaduna. At least I must look for something. And they were serious. And I stood there. This was the preacher that God used. I said, God, how can you use me to heal the sick and save sinners? And you are suddenly acting like you went to bed over these areas. Do you know how frustrating it is to look like you get answers in an area and then in other areas? Can I tell you, most areas of God's silence is the area that your darkness prevails. You must contend for light. I remember pleading with someone who I used to know. I said, please, can you look for 20,000 for me at least? And then they gave me the 20,000. I gave the sound people. And I said, please find your way. You could just go. We will meet and we will settle everything there. God is faithful. Let me at least rest and finish this crusade. When I went back, I said, this is enough. I knew that if I continue to do ministry under that condition, one day I will start lying to people out of pressure. And I attacked that foolishness on time so that by the time I start operating the prophetic, I will not start telling people lies. You see, let me tell you, most people you see who have deviated are not evil people. It is their carelessness with dealing with areas of darkness that the devil used as an advantage to now haunt them at the time of glory. So when God is beginning with you, he stretches you to make sure you write a list of the areas of darkness and start dealing with them. Because if you allow those areas of darkness, they will become your areas of defeat in the future. I made up my mind. I said, Lord, you are giving me a global ministry and I'm struggling with money to pay sound people. How are you ever going to build? How are you ever going to preach the gospel? How are you ever going to do the things you are doing? And that was when I had this scripture. Go to them that sell and buy. Don't sit in arrogance. Everybody has the currency to buy what you need. Humility is the currency. Meekness is the currency. Passion is the currency. Pursuit is the currency. With a data of 1,500 naira, you can find the information you have been searching for for years. No one is with an excuse to remain at your current level. Many people have sacrificed to put together those information. I made up my mind 
and today I give God glory that I made that decision what area of your life are you yet to experience the power of God is it your spiritual life is it your word study life is it longevity you sleep every night <laughs> excuse me you sleep every night and they are trying to kill you find the key to longevity before they kill you in real life if they are trying to kill you from a dream you think they will spare you physically most of us let me tell you it is our laxity that allows demonic things from the realm of the spirit to materialize for one year stretch every time you lie down you are in a coffin every time you lie down you are in the grave what are you doing you are alive go and get materials write out the scriptures that talk about long life and study it that was what I did because I travel all the time I'm in the air I'm on the road I'm not afraid of death but I know my death now will be a disadvantage to the body of Christ and the purposes of God but just assuming and say no problem I will not die terrorism wickedness everywhere I went to fish together the principles that make for long life and I studied it and found it as a key women there are some of you here that cook very well once upon a time you could not cook you know when you started learning today if we ask you to cook for the over 5,000 people all you will ask for is just time and the money for ingredients that's all you will not be afraid because you've gained mastery if you ask me to cook for you now the first thing I'm going to ask you is how many of you and then I'll say you must sign that you will eat anything that you see me cook so that I know I'm not wasting my time and I will be fidgeting there and praying and say God why add this I hope it's not too early I hope it's not too late and if I get sad I just close everything there just say Lord I've done my best let your mercy and favor finish cooking the remaining part for me that is a reflection of my ignorance in that area are we together but you can tell mama please can you cook and mama can laugh and say how many people you say 30 people and she says only I thought they were 100 the size does not matter because light is present they will enter the kitchen and with mastery they can tell you no 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 that size of salt is too much and you are like ah, don't worry and at the end of it it will look as if they measured it with surgical precision this is what i'm trusting god that god will bring you into that you will be so sound in knowledge you will know what to do part time and per season can i tell you the truth please look up some of you after this there are things you will find you will run and go back home and say mama the food you did not eat for me sit back and start getting ready to enjoy it that in your lifetime I will be a consolation a son or a daughter of consolation apostle people die early where I come from I understand but there is something you can do about it remember your tears stop when the book is open. Your tears don't stop when you are tired of crying. Your tears stop when the book is open. For someone, God is granting you the grace tonight to open this book. You have opened many other books, but not this book. You have trivialized this book at the expense of many other books you have opened books of worry you have opened books of pain you have opened books of regret but God is telling you there is only one book that is the cure for weeping he called the light day and he called the darkness night we're going to do three things very quickly and then we'll wrap up today number one is we're going to pray and then number two I'm going to speak over your life I promised that I was going to step out 
and pray and bless those outside please protocol while we are praying let me know if it's convenient provided those outside will behave themselves and not run around to come when I'm outside those outside if you are going to behave yourself and stay where you are and not cause commotion if you will be disciplined outside then I can come out and stand just to honor your sacrifices of sitting outside even through this wind and the rest to speak over your life listen I thank my God today for the times when even through the tears I didn't stop getting light and can I tell you till today in spite of the beats that God has helped in spite of what God has done I still remain a student of light it is a school I will never graduate from can I tell you this the higher you rise the more you need light so do not allow yesterday's success to frustrate you into failure because yesterday's excellence will be today's mediocrity you will need high level transitory light light that shifts you from face to face go and find light that relates to your area of wealth and abundance don't suffer and punish other people with poverty giving all kinds of spiritual excuses you can prosper and still make heaven Lazarus made it with his poverty Abraham made it with his prosperity the choice is yours get light over your health you see how the devil is destroying the health of people today you need to find out the keys for health health they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh go and find the keys that deal with favor you need this one oh. in this wicked world you need favor favor is what gives you an edge in this unfair tribalistic unfair wicked world it is the favor of God that becomes your distinguishing factor that's what took a village girl Hadassah from Shushan and exalted her till she became queen together with the king ruling over 127 provinces go and find light you are in ministry please listen to my teaching that I preached in Gombe yesterday and even this morning find the grace for the supernatural otherwise you'll be ready for empty pews I assure you because the hunger in God's people they don't just want a salmon they want a salmon with proof they want the gospel communicated with the power of the Holy Spirit back in it hallelujah your prayer life remember demons don't die remember demons are spirits if you do not have a robust prayer life you will become weak spiritually to your detriment you will never re really truly be able to be transformed you may never be able to live the fullness of God's life and what of all the arsenals of darkness that will seem to build a system of resistance against your life and your destiny we're wrapping up a sound word life I found your word and I did eat it it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul you need to contend for the word of God man shall not live by bread alone the Bible says but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God it says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness Psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7 and all the foundations of the earth are out of course Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7 says, but you shall die like mere man, like, and fall like one of these princes. It takes the study of God's word to build that capacity in the spirit. And let me tell you this. Satan does not only want you to backslide, he wants you to die. I repeat, Satan wants you to die. You have to refuse to die. He said, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The evils and the arrows that fly by day in 24 hours is enough to bring you down. 
not just physical accidents the spiritual arsenals that attempt to defeat the believer but you can build immunity and fortification by light and you can live in peace knowing that God has become your defender standing by you like a mighty terrible one has someone learned something today so please hear me when this conference is over that's not the end of it I only came here to stimulate hunger in your heart after this conference go and get teachings write a list of the areas in your life where you have seen darkness clearly take responsibility no more excuses it is not just the government it is not just my pastor it is not just my region I take responsibility and ask the spirit of grace to come and help you become like a spiritual archaeologist in search for truth the Bible says for everyone that seek it find it then when you find it let me tell you what happens you must obtain grace to walk in keeping with the truth you have found because another word for faith is obedience the Bible says the word that we heard the same word they heard is what we heard but it did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it truth itself does not bless you it is truth that is understood and diligently applied are we together now that ye know these things the bible says happy are you if you do them let me say this before we begin to pray if there is anything at all I sat back there and I listened to your pastor celebrate and appreciate the workings of God upon my life and I was just nodding my head as I was listening to him and I was saying if God's people know that what they think is unique to Joshua Selman is everybody's inheritance in Christ if you can find the requisite level of light can I tell you the difference between you and anyone you admire are three things. Number one, the level of light that that person has found that you have not found. Number two, the level of relationships that that person has in his life that reflect the superior belief system he now has. Number three, the level of engracing that has come to that person in honor to the light he has carried. That's what separates men. The difference between you, the former you, and the future you will be greater light and greater power. Has someone learned? Those outside, you remind me of many years when I stood outside also, standing for six hours at a Reinhard Bonke crusade in Joss. I was already in ministry at its infancy. But I heard that a great man was coming. And I left Zaria and I came to Joss. Outside reminds me of my former self. And I stood there watching a man so humble and yet so powerful. I remember what he taught. Very simple message. Annoyingly simple. And when he was done, I remember him trying to take water so that he would minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Tens of thousands of people across that ground. And my eyes were opened. That was the first time I saw a visionary expression of the Holy Spirit. I saw a giant bird that was bigger than this auditorium hovering around that entire space. I thought other people were seeing it. I, I didn't come there to show I was a man of God. I came with hunger. Many of you have heard my story. By the second day of that crusade, I made up my mind that I have to find a way of serving and sowing into this anointing. And since I didn't have any money then, I said at least I will sow the seed of service. I was pushing people on wheelchair. To, I was there 3 p.m. in the afternoon, helping to push the people who were going to go to the front. And someone met me and said, I'm not in the committee that should do it. 
I said, you are joking. You don't know where I'm coming from. And you don't know the hunger that brought me here. True story. As I was moving them, I said, Lord, this is how it will be also in my crusades in the future. Because you see, I know by light that the anointing you honor is the anointing you receive. You cannot receive in the presence of this honor. Let me tell you this. I stood on that ground for six hours. I remember you may have heard me say in my teaching, there was a pregnant woman who was standing near me. And you know what it means for a pregnant woman to stand. Occasionally she'll be tired, she will lean on me. How do you now tell this woman, Madam, please, just, you look like you're a wicked person. I was almost going to say, why did you come to this crusade ground? But after that encounter, I knew something came upon my life. Because tonight, even though our time is up, but I can tell you something from heaven is going to land on somebody's destiny. For some of you, you are outside. You are saying, I'm far to the gate. Will the anointing of the Spirit touch me? The God that we serve has an all-seeing eye. He does not just see the faces of men. He sees their hearts. If I had said that time I wanted to see Renard Bonke, I'm sure the, the military people would have bundled me and thrown me somewhere. But I said I may not see him. But I honor him with all my heart as touching the sacrifice. And something landed from him to my life. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. I didn't just come to speak to you and stimulate an appetite. I also came by the privilege of God's grace that something from heaven will rest upon your life. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. For the kings to be born, for revival to return, for the kings to arise, for revival to return, yeah. Hali, Hali, yo. Hali, yo. Hali, yo. Hali, Hali, yo. Oh, oh, oh. Hali, Hali, yo. Hali, yo. Hali, yo. Hali, Hali, yo. Now, hear me. We are going to get into a prayer session right now. And please let me encourage you. Don't allow Satan cheat you at this session. Forget about who you came with. And you are going to cry to God. Father, let my destiny become a feast of light from tonight. Light from heaven. As touching the areas of need fall upon my life. Go ahead and pray. Outside pray. Inside pray. he called the light day and the darkness he called night grant me access to the light that turns my night to day man of God are you praying businessman are you praying Champion in the making, are you praying? Apostle in the making, are you praying? Prophet in the making, are you praying? Evangelist, are you praying? Kingdom financier, are you praying? Expose my areas of ignorance. Open me up, oh God. To the areas I do not have sufficient light. What principle controls lifting? What principle controls spiritual health and wellness? What principle controls prayer fire? What principle controls a healthy world life? What principle controls influence? 
what principle controls relationships what principles control character what principle controls me grant me by your spirit reveal to me someone is praying what principle controls complete total deliverance and freedom from demonic forces
Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So even Egyptians can favor you. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. Exodus 11 and verse 3. Still speaking about favor. We are praying. I'm challenging you to see the word basis. All this balloon success that people rise and fall is because they are not fortified by the word. When the word becomes the garrison and the basis of your confidence, you do not need to fear. Because even if heaven and earth fails, not one jot of his word will fail. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh, servants, and in the sight of the people. When I found it, Esther chapter 2 and verse 15, the B part says, And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. I came from a background with my own share of witchcraft and diabolic things and wickedness. And I knew that there has to be a way to keep this wicked spirit at bay. And I found the key. Psalm 66. Say unto God, verse 1 now or 3? Verse 3. I hope I'm right on that. How terrible art thou in thy works? He said, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. When I desired influence, not for the sake of self-aggrandizement, for the sake of the kingdom, I found in Acts chapter 12, the first 10 verses, control, there was a key there that God opened my eyes. He said that when Peter was bound hand in chain and there were eight soldiers who bound him, the Bible says, but prayer, verse 4, was made of us five now but prayer was made to God of the church for him and an angel came and loosed him and when an angel loosed him there were three gates that he passed the first word or the first gate the second word or the second gate and he said he came to the iron gate that opens to the city there is a gate that opens to the city is the iron gate if that gate does not open you can be in a city and yet spiritually you are outside that city the iron gate that opens to the city I also found a key to influence being that in Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 and 3 that Gentiles don't just come to you they come to your light and even their arrogant kings will not come to your light. They will come to the brightness of your rising. The consistency of your results. Can I tell you this? Please go back home and begin a definite project of searching the truth and the keys and the mysteries that control the various areas of your life. Can I tell you, if you spend the whole 2022 finding just three mysteries that work three maybe your spiritual health maybe favor and maybe the power of relationships if that is the only mystery you find you have made this year a fruitful one because when you truly find it hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son Attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you